Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Robert the Leather Cowboy at Premier Leather Crafters with another video. I'm trying to catch up on all of the videos, it's, but it's a plethora of knowledge and stuff that uh, I am also gaining, as well as, let me get this camera adjusted right, uh, as well as picking up from some more experienced crafters than myself um, who are giving me a wealth of knowledge. Um, and I was working on a piece. Actually, I, I just completed a belt yesterday, and I wasn't satisfied with the the depthness that I was getting from my um, from my beveling. Uh, and so, I mean, the piece turned out to be a pretty good belt. I think it was a pretty good belt, uh, and that that it can pass um, for for one of a premier leather piece, but. I still, as a crafter, I wasn't satisfied. Some of you may may know about uh, um, may know what that feels like. Um, if you're an artist, just say if you was a a, a painter or a, a a sketch artist, you know one line will throw the whole piece off to the artist. Now you may have a host of people that tell you how beautiful it is, it's flawless work, but it's that one thing to an artist that just nah, it just rubs you the wrong way. And that's the feeling that I was having with this belt that I just finished up. I was not quite satisfied with the beveling work. Um, now I, I did send some pictures to the client and let the client know which they have absolutely no idea about beveling and cuts and all of that stuff and backgrounding. They just want the finished piece, which she was overwhelmed with that, but I'll still wind up giving a small discount. Uh, actually I gave like a 40% discount. Because I just it just didn't say premier leather crafter. So what I've done, and, and for those of you who subscribe to the video, and if you haven't subscribed to the video, hit the subscribe button down below, uh, and you can catch all of the videos that I do. Um, you guys know one that I'm all about saving money. Two, I'm all about maximizing your your your. Uh, put your product as well as your potential to make it look to give it that professional look but yet and still the more you do the more you get off into leather crafting the more you want to get better and that's the thing that if I don't care who it is I don't care if they've been tooling and designing leather for 40 50 years if they say there's nothing else for them to learn then that's somebody that you don't need to listen to because there's no way possible that one particular crafter can know everything about leather work. And this is just me being honest with you. Uh, I don't know at all. And But what I did, I went back and, and I went to the Leathers Guild, dropped a, a Q&A, and I was like, hey, I'm not satisfied with the beveling work that I'm doing. Uh, sent a picture of the piece. Uh, and now I'm going to give you all of the information that came in about what to check when you are not getting satisfied with your bevel work or with your uh, your stamping work. First and foremost, one that came up was you're not hitting it hard enough. Now, if, if you are just beginning or if you're starting out and you have craftsman tools, um, which you can purchase from Tandy or probably some other um, leather supply places. Um, you 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 know like I know you just can't hit those tools like you're driving nails. And actually, I felt like I was driving nails. But that was one of the things that came up was how hard are you hitting? And now and here it is. I use an eight ounce mallet polyurethane mallet now and, and a lot of crafters are using the malls the m-a-u-l's and you can check those at any leather supply place and it gives you a little bit more uh concentrated hit um than it is the way it's designed or or, or built and uh, made uh as opposed to a mallet 
to where you're trying to hit all of your concentration around the center point. Now, if you guys can see this, you can see sometimes it hits over here. I have some hits over here. So it's not really a focal point because it's such a large area to hit. Now, if I was to flip this over, you can still see in this part here to where I'm hitting um, most of my tools on this side. That could have a major play into it. That could. But I felt that wasn't it because I felt I was really hitting it. And if you guys can look at this again, you, you can tell I'm putting a whacking. It's like whack-a-mole over here. Um, but that was a, one that was brought up. So if you're not having um, a good enough impression or bevel with your work, check and make sure you go back and try to go back and tune and hit with a little bit more force. Um Another question that another question that came up was how deep was my cut? Now that might have been one of the culprits involved in that particular piece because when you're working on a belt, you only have about well, and that particular belt was like an inch and three quarters. So and, and it was laid out in a rose design. And actually, I'm going to show you the piece uh, if I can find it. Yep, here it is. This right here. I don't know if you guys can see that, but as you can tell, it's cut. It's very much cut, but you can't see the beveling work on that. Now, it is beveled, and it has been beveled quite well. I mean, quite, I was hitting it pretty good. But, uh, and if you could see that, uh, maybe I can tool it that way. Now you can see how it is raised from the... Uh, uh, it is some separation in the tooling work or in the beveling work, as well as the backgrounding work. There is some separation that you can see, but it just wasn't that good 3D effect. So what happened was I said, well, maybe it might have been the cut. So I went back and, and this is one thing that is very key and important in beveling work is to make sure that your swivel knife has been keened and sharpened. You guys can see the tip on that. And I know I'm kind of looking off because I'm I want I have the knife in front of the, the camera lens itself. But you want to make sure that that and that's not a chip in there. That's why I was using the um uh using the jeweler's roots uh on there. But I, I felt my knife was sharp enough, but I went back and put a very high super sheen, I mean, super keen edge on there again. Now, um, keening up your knife and, and constantly, constantly stropping your swivel knife. Sometimes you'll see it uh, written if you're on one of the forms, you'll see it typed in as SK, that swivel knife. Um but making sure that that blade is keen and stropped every few cuts. You don't want to cut a whole entire piece and then strop it. You want to constantly be stropping or, or uh, using your Dremel, uh, whatever you're using to keep that, that edge keen and sharp. You want to constantly do it. I would say every three to four cuts. Every three to four cuts, strop that thing on both sides and keep that, that edge true because the mineral deposits or the calcium deposits that's coming out of the cowhide can collect on the tip of your blade. You'll know that your blade, one key way that you'll know that your blade is starting to get build up is it'll start skipping. Uh, you won't see that good even cut flow line in your cuts. You'll start seeing like it's jumping in some places. And that's a key way to know that, hey, it's time to strop. But just to play it safe, every three, four cuts, boom strop that thing and you don't have to worry about it so another one came up which was interesting to me was what am i beveling on very key what am i beveling on a lot of crafters out there are building these wood uh tables and wood benches and they're reinforcing it with two by fours or four by fours or whatever the case may be. The one thing about that, I didn't build a wood bench. I built a steel bench. Uh, I just don't trust wood. Wood bounces a lot. Even if you are nailing and putting together, I, I've seen some tables to where a guy has like 16 two by fours by two uh, all 
merged together. And a, a two by four is two inches, so you got 16 of those. <laughs> so and that's a that's a 32 inch uh, width or length, and it's it's turned up on its side, so you have four inches of sturdiness there. But the one thing about wood is just to me, and that's to me, to me, and to me only. I just didn't do a wood table. I, I had a steel table built out of angle iron and I'm using uh, a, a quarter inch thick steel top. Uh, so I never wanted to worry about bounce. And then on top of that, I went back and, and um, I found a, a, um, a countertop company uh, when I was living in Florida. A countertop company had they had granite slabs out there, scrap pieces, which they don't mind giving away. You can go out there and get those for free just to take them off. So I have like an inch and a half or inch and a quarter uh, inch slab, marble slab that was used, that was a cutout from a sink that they was doing. And I'm gonna show you guys real quick. That's my marble slab, inch and a quarter inch. Uh, an inch and a quarter inch thick so I do have enough and this does not bounce this is my table here where you can see the angle iron and all of that so it's very well put together now this um, uh, piece here I use as my cutting board uh, I got this piece from a um, uh, uh, one of the local chicken houses that was here. This is one of the cutting cutting boards that's used in the eviscerating room when they're cutting and slicing the chicken. So it's a pretty thick cutting board. Polyurethane, very thick, very, very sturdy, and it's also an inch and a quarter. So you can get those for free. Uh, they replace them periodically at chicken houses or chicken plants where they process the birds. You can get those uh, for free. They just want you to haul them off. So actually I had like an eight, p uh, eight foot board that I cut down into two foot. And then so even when this one is cut up and sliced up and used up from you me doing leather work on or punched up, uh, I can go back and cut me another two foot out of the other slab. And then I still should have slab. And this stuff lasts pretty long. But getting back to the beveling part. Um, so they asked, what was I beveling on so it wasn't my slab uh it was it's not my table so i narrowed it down to um the cuts which was a very key thing uh that one of the crafters had said was how deep was i cutting that was a very interesting thing how deep was i cutting see the thing with leather work is you just don't want to cut it um, yes, your swivel knife will cut, but it's the depthness of the cut. You really want to get deep into the cut, which will play in con concert with the beveling. Because the deeper the cut, when you start to bevel, your beveling is only going to go down as deep as the cut. So, and that's what makes that raised 3D portion really starts to come up is how deep the cut is. That was something that was very, I thought that was very interesting. Two, another crafter had mentioned casing. Is it properly cased? Now, you hear that term a lot amongst leather crafters and casing is merely when you are wetting your leather how wet it is. Uh, if it's too damp, that can cause problems. If it's too damp. But also, if it's not damp enough, you won't get, you will not get, you won't get, I'm from the South, I'm sorry. You will not get a good uh, bevel impression if it's not wet enough because basically it's like you are beveling on on a dry piece of leather and you won't get that depthness and, and that 3D look like what you trying to achieve. So with that, I, I took all of the information and all of the tips and all of the suggestions uh, um, and, and this is really what leather working is or leather crafting is, is you're compiling a lot of different suggestions and tips from other um experienced crafters and applying them 
to you what works best for you because there is no one particular thing that's set in stone and that's the one thing that i want you guys to understand is even if you're on these leather forums you're going to get a whole host now this particular leather form or leather guild that i'm in or leather group that i'm in is like fifteen thousand crafters so that's a lot of information that's coming in from fifteen thousand people as what can be the problem as you can tell, it went from, e even one craft even said, well, what type of leather are you using? So that lets me know it's very important. Now, a lot of people can't afford Herman Oak or European Oak leather. That's that's the top of the line. And it's very, it, it's not too often that I purchase those hides unless I'm really going for a top quality show piece and I'm really asking for a lot of money for it. That's when I go into that. Because as a business owner and entrepreneur, everybody can't afford a high-end quality piece of leather. I have some belts that are $100. I have some belts that are $325, depending on the leather. But even though the work may be the same, but it's the grade and the quality of leather that's different. So quite naturally, I'm going to get my uh, laboring price, but that's also going to go into the price that I spent for the hide. So the quality of the leather, the grade of the leather can play a big part into the, the look of your, your tooling work. Uh, so it went from what kind of leather, how was I casing the leather, what type of knife was I using, whether it was a ceramic knife or a steel blade, which a lot of crafters, especially a lot of new crafters can't, you just don't have that type of income yet to do a ceramic blade. Now, ceramics are good. Ruby is the best. But, you know, and that's when you're looking for that good, and you still have to strop either one of them. You have to keep that edge keen if you're going to use it. But a lot of crafters are transitioning from the steel blades. Now, you can see I'm a traditionalist. I'm still with the steel blade on both of my uh, SKs. I'm still with the steel blade. I even ha I have not even transferred over to the ceramic or the ruby blades yet. But uh, and this is just an informational video. So for you out there who are having the same type of problem, this is what I'm suggesting to you. One, check the type of table that you're using or the type of workbench that you're using. If you're using a table that's what, and that gives you a lot of bounce, which like I said, I'm not a fan of wood. Wood bounces. Even if you're building that thing out of that gum two by sixes and reinforcing it with two by sixes, you know, you, you can't, to me, you can't put enough nails or screws in wood to keep it from bouncing. Uh, especially if you're tooling on, um, like my shop is inside of a building. So uh, if if the floor is wood and you're still pounding and beating on, you're still going to have a chance to uh, bounce in your craft, in your tooling work. So it depends on the table, the, the type of slab that you're working on. A lot of crafters are getting away from marble slabs, which this was the first time in 22 years that I've heard somebody say that marble is too soft. Now, I thought marble was pretty hard. That's rock. But he suggested, hey, look, go to one of these monument build businesses and see if they have some uh, grass dirt or grass stained slabs that they may somebody may have upgraded a slab you know i don't know if you're into the whole superstition thing or whatever but now i do know those marble slabs probably come about they can come up to at least four to six inches thick that will reduce bounce a whole hell of a lot uh but i felt with the steel table that i have i can stick with the inch and a quarter marble slab that I had, which I got that free. And to, to lug around a monument stone or a headstone, man, that's pretty heavy. You won't be moving that thing around the shop too often. So, um, but I felt that was good on that. But um, check your cuts. How deep is your cut? Practice on a scrap piece about the depthness of the cut. 
and that will play a big part in there. Casing your leather, making sure that your leather is not too wet or not wet enough. Uh, I'm a fan of the spray bottle. Uh, I feel that I can get a good even uh, mist of water um, with a spray bottle as opposed to a sponge. See, I know some crafters that use sponges. I know some crafters that use spray bottles. So I went with what works best for me. Again, you basically to improve your leather work, you want to compile a lot. Even in my videos, I'm not the only crafter that's doing videos. There's a whole host. There are a whole host of crafters that do videos. I would encourage you to watch them all. If you can, if you have that time, or if you're dedicated to this to this business, if you're dedicated to this craft, watch as many videos as you can, pretty much all about the same subject. And you take little nuggets. I call them nuggets of information if you guys have read my book. Uh, I take nuggets of information from each crafter, and I apply that to my, my skill level and my craftsmanship, and I come up with my own. Now, uh, I'm not going to keep you guys both, but this is what I came up with. And if you can see this, this is what I think is an ideal cut. You can pretty much, now this is right after casing, it's dried a little bit. But uh, this is a little piece that I'm just decided to work for myself. It's going to be a minimalist wallet. Um, uh, also with a, a money clip inside of it. So, but this is, I went back and super, I mean, I really, really, really stropped and worked on my swivel knife. And uh, I went back and cut this very, I cut it a little deeper than usual to my liking. I cut it a little bit deeper because I really want to find out what is the culprit of my beveling work, not really giving that 3D, that super 3D look. As well as, and I forgot to mention this, and this is very important, the tools that you use to bevel with or background with. When you're purchasing your tools, make sure that you are paying very close attention to the steepness of your tools, the depthness, the angle. This will play a lot into your depthness on beveling. No matter what it, what tool you get, the the smaller. And I have two different sizes here, and you guys can see that. The smaller the bevel tool, the more you can get into tight curves or to tight spaces. Now, as you can see, like in the M. I'm going to probably use, and I have even one that's smaller than that. I have one that's really small. But you can see the depthness or the steepness of that tool there. So that's going to play a big part. And this is going to get into those tight curves right there. You can see the tool, how small it is compared to the M, as well as there. See, this tool here, this bevel tool here was not really work. It's going to be too wide especially too wide for that. So the smaller your tools, you can get really get into tight places, but you want to pay attention to the steepness. Let me try to put these compared together. You can see how steep the smaller tool is. So I'm really going to get that raised uh, look that that's the goal is to really get that raised look that I'm going for. So this plays a lot into your beveling work. Casing, uh, uh, we spoke about that. Casing, cutting, uh, and just practice with it. Practice, practice. Your muscle memory is going to give you a feel for how deep you want your cuts to be. Even if you're stamping, a lot of times you you may think that uh, you're hitting your tool deep enough. And especially uh, with a crafter like myself, you know, anything that you use over a long period of time is going to have to be replaced. So maybe it's uh, maybe I've used these so long that uh, it's time to replace them and get some new tools. I may, and then I might have to upgrade. Now, if you want to go in right off the bat, I would suggest Barry King's or uh, Jim Linnell's son has a new uh, line that's out. It's also a guy named Sergey 
that's overseas, he has some great tools. It's from what I'm looking at, his tools are awesome for a good, decent price, you know, $15 to $20. Now, yeah, you can't beat good old Craftsman tools. These are like $3.99, $4.99, $5.99. You can't beat these compared to uh, some of Barry King's or Sergey's tools or even Jim Linnell's son's tools. I mean, which those tools, uh, some of them are getting up into the $40s and $50. But you get what you pay for. Now, one thing I can mention about the Craftsman tools is these can be modified. So you can change the depthness or the steepness in there with a sander and a polishing belt. Because these are smooth bevel tools. So you can put these on a sander, a uh, belt sander, and increase that steepness just a little bit more but you definitely have to know what you're doing um if you're not if you you're not comfortable with doing them yourself take them to a machinist somebody who can really get them steep and can get into your bevel cuts but um i i hope this video has uh, given you a little bit more information if you're having issues and problems uh like i had and again I'm not too arrogant of a crafter to say that I know everything and you should only listen to me. No, that's not my thing. It's because I'm still learning. Uh, like with the slab. <laughs> I didn't know marble slab was softer than a monument headstone. You know, I mean, who would have thought, you know, but uh, uh, I would have thought rock is rock. But hey, you know, um, but you can... Uh, like I said, pull down little bits of information from each crafter that you that you watch on videos or each crafter that you have interactions with in these forums and in these leather guilds because basically what has happened, everybody has taken something from somebody else and applied it to their craftsmanship and it's just passing down. That's preserving the craft and preserving the trade. So I hope that this video helped you out. You guys stay tuned. You'll see the finished piece once I get this done uh, on all my social media sites. Um, everything uh, I'm on Facebook on the Premier Leather Crafters Instagram is Cowboy PLC for Premier Leather Crafters and that's K-A-W-B-O-I you can always go in and um, send an invite to those pages if you want to see the more finished product on social media sites or you can always just hit the subscribe button below on YouTube and I don't do a lot of updates on YouTube. It's just mostly informational videos and giving you guys information that I have received over the years as applying to my work. So thank you guys for chilling with me these 27 and a half, uh, 27 minutes going on 28 minutes. You know, again, happy crafting, much peace and love, and I'll see you guys on the flip side. Peace.